Okay, um, we are pleased to have a return uh, guest, uh, our National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, who will give some brief opening remarks and then take some of your questions. So with that, I'll turn it over to Jake. Thanks, Jen. We are deeply moved by the outpouring of support from so many Americans, so many of them veterans, to help the Afghan evacuees, those Afghans at risk, our Afghan allies, settle here in the United States. This is the best of the American spirit, and we look forward to working with them in the days, weeks, and months ahead. And with that, I would be happy to take your questions. Yeah. Has the President decided whether he is going to need more time beyond August 31st to get all U.S. personnel and Afghan people out of the country? The President believes we are making substantial progress, dozens of flights, thousands now, tens of thousands of people evacuated from the country. All U.S. personnel. Tens of thousands of people. Taliban agreement to extend beyond August 31st? We are engaging with the Taliban, uh, uh, consulting with the Taliban on every aspect of what's happening in Kabul right now. Ultimately, it will be the President's decision how this proceeds, no one else's. And just Jake, yes. Why, if you knew that there would be chaos, did the administration not prepare the American public for the chaos? So first, I'm glad you asked this question, and I want to take a step back and address the nature of an evacuation in a circumstance like this, and then I'll come to your specific point on messaging. Yes. Yes, Jack. Whether it's August 31st or shortly thereafter, it's clear that all of the eligible Afghans who work for U.S. forces and the U.S. government are not going to be able to get out. And as I said yesterday in comments on the Sunday shows, we will continue to get Afghans at risk out of the country even after U.S. military forces have left. Yes. Why does the president continue to say that the Taliban is facing an existential question about how it will be viewed on the world stage? I mean, they're going door to door, going after the families of these translators. Don't they already know who they are? So first, the president has been very clear. Uh, thank you, Jake. So Friday, the president said that we got rid of Al Qaeda in Afghanistan. Sunday, the Secretary of State said there is Al Qaeda in Afghanistan. So are you presenting the president with the full picture, or is he just misapplying the intelligence when he makes these public statements? The president was referring to Al Qaeda's capability to attack the United States repeatedly on multiple occasions. Yes. Does, does the administration regret not moving quicker to evacuate more Afghan civilians who work in the United States? So again, I'm very glad you asked that question. So this refers to the Special Immigrant Visa Program. The Special Immigrant Visa Program has been around for a significant number of years, and it was never designed as conceived by Congress for a mass evacuation circumstance. Yes. Thanks, Jake. Th does the President intend to fire, reassign, or ask for the resignation of any White House personnel or administration officials who have handled the situation in Afghanistan? I have not heard him say so. It's, of course, your job to ask those kinds of questions. It's my job just to keep doing what we're doing, which is every day try to get as many people out as possible. What if the U.S. can't get Americans and Afghan allies out of the country by August 31st? But what happens then if the Taliban says they are not willing to extend? Is the U.S. going to abide by their red lines? So I'm not going to take this on as a hypothetical question. What I'm going to say is what I said at the outset. Thank you. Jake, Thanks, everybody. Your statement, Thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thank I'm you, Jake. Jake. I'm down the Afghan journalist. I'm Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Jen. There are Taliban fighters right now carrying American weapons. They're wearing American fatigues, the full kit of gear. How is that advancing America's national security interests? Well, Peter, I think my, or my colleague, Jake Sullivan, spoke to a version of this uh, last week. Most of the criticism is not of leaving Afghanistan. It's the way that he has ordered it to happen, by pulling the troops before getting these Americans who are now stranded. Does he have a sense of that? First of all, I think it's irresponsible to say Americans are stranded. They are not. We are committed to bringing Americans who want to come home home. We are in touch with them via phone, via text, 
via email, via any way that we can possibly reach Americans to get them home if they want to return home. There are no Americans stranded is the White House's official position on what's happening in Afghanistan right now. I'm just calling you out for saying that we are stranding Americans in Afghanistan when I said when we have been very clear that we are not leaving Americans who want to return home. We are going to bring them home. And I think that's important for the American public to hear and understand. Okay. The president likes to say America is back, but his policies have Americans getting beat up by the Taliban and Afghans handing babies over barbed wire fences. Is that what he meant when he said America is back? What the president meant is that we are going to continue to lead in the world, including being the leaders in evacuating not just our Afghan partners, not just American citizens, but now also our allies. And we have done that by evacuating approximately 42,000 people over the last month. Oh, just over a week ago, we didn't have control over the airport. Now we've evacuated 35, 37,000 people. All U.S. personnel. Knowing there's about a week or so until the deadline, do you anticipate that the risk to American troops, American citizens, and Afghans will increase? It, will there be You more, mean on the ground, Kelly? Yes. Uh, will there be more a desperation knowing that the number of flights out may be dwindling? And if so, how do you adjust for that in terms of your preparation? Well, I would say that um, uh, is uh, is uh, of uh, the fact uh, is. Jen, Matt, Go ahead. Thanks, Jen. Jake mentioned that he'd be able to get us a breakdown of the number of people who are being evacuated who are Americans and the mm -hmm. number who are Afghans. But that's something that reporters have been asking for and not getting for several days. Do you have those numbers? And if not, when could we expect to see them? I I certainly understand the question. Uh, I know that my colleague John Kirby said a few thousand Americans have been evacuated earlier today. As Jake noted, the vast majority have been Afghans. Uh, the president, as you know, has the utmost respect for people who have served as being a father himself uh, of uh, uh, the uh, 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 to uh, soon. Does the president see any substantive differences between the Taliban leadership that exists right now and the regime that existed two decades ago? I don't think we're in a position to make any assessment on that front at this point in time. Our focus right now is on working to get American citizens, our Afghan partners, working with our allies to get them out of the country. Part of that has been a discussion and ongoing discussions with the Taliban about individuals moving safely to the airport. That's what the focus of our engagement with them has been at this point. Go ahead. Go ahead. Jen, thank you. At the risk of this being a yes or no answer, is the president concerned about being put on the spot with these pledges to get Americans out of Afghanistan by the 31st, all those who want to get out of Afghanistan. Is he concerned about being put on the spot with this? By whom? By just the general public opinion or whatever with these pledges from him, from Jake and others. Uh, doesn't it put the president on the spot a little bit? The president think? believes it's the responsibility of any president and the United States uh, to convey to any American uh, that if they want to come home, we're going to find a way to bring you home. Uh, and that commitment does not end on the 31st. Uh, uh, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Um, Jake mentioned that the U.S. would try to extract Americans who are outside of Kabul and other parts of the country. Does that apply also to Afghan SIV applicants who are also in that same situation, perhaps in rural areas, and they can't make their way to Kabul because the Taliban is, is controlling the roads? I don't have anything operational I can preview for you on that front. I can tell you that our commitment to our Afghan partners uh, is um, is uh, is uh, 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 to figure out the best way for them to safely get to the airport. Uh, last time you briefed, you meant you were asked about the number of uh, SIV approved Afghans who chose to stay yep. in the country before the latest sort of chaos that we've seen. You said you might get back to us with an overall figure. Have you have you been able to dig that up? It's really a number, and I understand and I, uh, that your question. Uh, it's really a number the State Department has, um, and it is not. It, um, you go ahead. Thank you, Jim. I don't have anything to say. Everybody know that thousand of people, fourteen thousand people around of the airport, uh, outside the airport, no food, no shelter. I know. Every single time I get like uh, twenty, thirty. A phone call, contact, everybody's crying, especially women, men. Uh, I know it's difficult for the United States to. Um, incredibly heartbreaking and tragic. And, uh, you know, I have been to Afghanistan a number of times. Uh, 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 so I don't want them to feel they have been forgotten. They have not. Uh, and we will keep them in our hearts. And thank you for your question. Go ahead. Thank you, Jim. 
Uh, related to Kelly's question about the polls and the uh, political fallout, is the president concerned about the Afghan crisis causing a loss of momentum and all the other things he's been trying to do? It's a pretty unique situation to have such an enormous domestic crisis with the pandemic, and a lot of people still not wanting to vaccinate. Now the Afghan thing is just actually sucking up all the attention and effort and energy, um, and his landmark piece of legislation, which is, which is now hanging um, in the air. Can you just describe, just give us a little bit of an overview of the bandwidth that you have, that he has, for, I'm sure he wasn't expecting to be here, um, right back in the summer of freedom? Well, uh, first, you're not elected president expecting to do easy things. You're expecting to do hard things. But let me give you kind of another way to look at this. Uh, we have now uh, vaccinated more people than ever, almost, if not ever, have been vaccinated ever in the United States in history. We are about, we are op operationalizing perhaps the largest airlift, U.S. airlift in history. Uh, we are working toward getting two major pieces of legislation through Congress, uh, through the House of Representatives, uh, and then hopefully, and then I, then the president will look forward to signing each into law. That will change millions of people's lives across this country, fundamentally address the climate crisis, and invest in industries to make us more competitive. I would say those are a couple of things that we're proud to be a part of. Thank you, everyone. I'm so sorry I got to run. We'll see you tomorrow. So thank you all so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, what about ISIS?